Many students will fall for the trap on this limit problem, thinking that it doesn't converge. But you don't have to be one of them, so if you want to be a number ninja who gets this right on your next exam, watch until the end because it's very surprising what this converges to. So when you look at this, maybe you've tried L'Hopital's rule like other students have, and you struggled because it doesn't look like we have an indeterminate form. But we can actually manipulate this formula so that we can actually use L'Hopital's rule. By having a common denominator, rewriting the expression this way because I simply multiplied 1 over sine of x times x over x, and then for this 1 over x, I multiplied it by sine of x over sine of x. I got this new form where now when I plug in 0 for x, I have one of the indeterminate forms where because we'll end up simplifying this to 0 over 0, we're allowed to now use L'Hopital's rule. And I'm going to do that. Check out a video that you see above if you need a refresher. But to make it short, remember that with L'Hopital's rule, we can now take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator, and rewrite the limit in terms of the derivatives. So for this numerator right here, when I rewrote the problem, this x minus sine of x, I'm going to go ahead and find its derivative right now. So for d over dx of that expression, as you know, this will be simply 1 minus cosine of x. And then for the denominator from above, this x sine of x expression, I'm going to do the same thing using the product rule here. And that's going to give me a derivative that ends up to be sine of x plus x cosine of x. So now what we can do is with the limit that we started with and after creating a common denominator when we got this expression right here. Now, instead of having this fraction, I can plug in the derivative for the numerator and then the derivative for the denominator. And now we can work with this new problem. And generally, L'Hopital's rule can oftentimes make the problem simpler to work with. But this one needs a little bit of persistence from you ninjas because it's not a quick answer, but just hang in there. Because when I plug in zero now for the top and the bottom, we're going to run into a little bit of a pickle because when you simplify this further for x equals 0, you're going to get 1 minus cosine of 0 on the top. And then for the bottom, you're going to get sine of 0 plus the product of 0 and cosine of 0. And again, this is going to simplify to something that's going to be another indeterminate form. We're going to have 0 over 0 here, but no sweat because remember, you can apply L'Hopital's rule as many times as you want here, provided that you always end up with one of the indeterminate forms where you're allowed to use the rule. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. So for the expression 1 minus cosine of x on the numerator from the last limit expression we worked with above after taking the derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of this once again, and that's going to just simply give me sine of x. And for the denominator, this sine of x plus x cosine of x, when I apply the derivative here, it is going to now have three terms, and it looks like it's making the problem more difficult to work with, but you'll see what we're going to end up with here in just a bit. So this is going to give cosine of x plus cosine of x minus x sine of x, and of course I can combine the two cosine of x terms, giving me this simpler expression, so that now when I write the limit problem again in a different way, this time using this derivative result for the top and the bottom, aha, now when I plug in 0, watch what happens. I'm going to simply get sine of 0 on the top, which is 0, but now we have to make sure that on the denominator we are not dividing by 0, right? Because if it's anything that's not 0, that's going to give us our answer, and that's what it turns out to be, which is simply going to be an answer where it converges to the number 0.